Hey, happy Halloween, and welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1980 Detroit Lions Alternate History. Today, we're going to take a look back at uh, yesterday's loss to the Houston Oilers, and then we'll take a look uh, forward to the New York Giants game this weekend. We'll talk about uh, the matchup itself and uh, who is injured for both teams, and then we'll take a look at our current contest. So... Uh, first of all, let's take a moment here and uh, recap yesterday's game versus the Houston Oilers. Probably one of the more disappointing games this season. Um, I guess I underestimated the Oilers' defense. Uh, I didn't look at them close enough because their secondary uh, may be the best in the game right now. And their, uh, the defensive line who sacked us uh, twice early on, uh, really setting up, uh, you know, kind of forcing us to uh, throw the ball, um, which eventually led to two interceptions. So, like, they had a good scheme against us. I mean, the computer AI definitely uh, had me fooled during that game. And I felt like after these two la uh, victories over the Rams and the Bucks, the back-to-back -back wins, uh, that we just had, I thought I was on the right track um, by choosing the balanced defense scheme uh, nearly every time. But with a team like the Oilers, uh, who have Earl Campbell, um, you know, at running back, and then also have like sol three solid wide receivers, uh, three receivers that they're not uh, uh, afraid to go to the third uh, receiver, uh, you know, twice to start the game. I mean, it was really hard for me to predict what we needed to do in order to um, to win this game. We did win the time of possession, uh, which I guess is, you know, something, but, uh, you know, we couldn't get a rushing game going. We did, we did get 129 yards rushing, but because we were playing from behind, we were forced to pass, and uh, you can see we didn't even get 200 yards passing. So, And I think one of those was a big 54-yard uh, gain to uh, Freddie Scott, and then just when I think things were going well for us in this game, then they would rip off an 80-yard touchdown pass, which you just, I mean, how can you combat that? I, I don't know. I thought we had the, the right defense called. So it was a very frustrating game. I guess that is my point. And then after all of that was over, we um, got a look at our injuries, and we suffered some some serious injuries in this game. If you take a look here, you'll see that we lost Keith Dorney, our best offensive lineman. He's going to be out for three weeks. So that means Homer Elias will get into uh, the tackle spot and make his first uh, start of the season. We already have Willie Parker back in there after we gave uh, Wally Pesuit uh, three starts in that position. He's going to miss three more games. Uh, so those are the two <coughs> excuse me, offensive players um, that are going to be unavailable. We take a look at our, our uh, stats here for our main uh, offensive players. And you can see Gary Danielson um, didn't have the worst game. I mean, he's got 11 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. He's just shy of 2,000 yards. So I, I feel like he's performing better than he had uh, in his previous full season, which was 1978. Uh, as I mentioned before, he was injured in 79, so, and unavailable. Let's take a look at Billy Sims. Uh, averaging four yards per rush, we depend on him so much to control the offense that, uh, and to set up the pass, that when he doesn't have a good game, uh, we really struggle and he had a costly fumble yesterday early on when we were on the verge of taking the lead um, we were down uh, in the red zone and uh, Billy coughed it up that swung the momentum back the other direction and I, I don't think we actually recovered from that uh, but he's still having a, a statistically good year I think he's third in rushing uh, in the NFL rushing yards then we got Dexter Bussey. Uh, we went to him a few times during the game. He's got 166 yards rushing now. There's David Hill. David Hill probably had his best game 
Um, he had four receptions that gave him 16 on the year. He's been targeted 34 times. So half the times that we've targeted him, he has not caught the ball. So that's not good. Uh, but we try to get him involved. Here is uh, Freddie Scott. He leads all of football in receptions and yards. Uh, he did not get 100 yards receiving. I believe for the first time all season, he's got 100 targets. He's, <laughs> he's 60 for 100. 60% 60 of the time, he'll catch the ball, which is right in line with uh, Danielson's completion percentage. Leonard Thompson, he had a couple catches, kind of quiet. He's got 24 on the year. A career, uh, yeah, a career high. And then we have uh, our offensive linemen, which we don't need to go into detail. But Rick Kane has been a nice surprise helping us out of the backfield. He's got seven receptions and 94 rushing yards, actually averaging a higher rate than Billy Sims. Not that we would ever dare start him over that. Mike Freedy had a catch. Uh, Jesse Thompson had a catch, came out of nowhere. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much our offense from yesterday's game. Let's take a look at the defense. This is where we really have trouble now. We, were, we weren't even really that great to begin with, but we lost Dave Purifoy on the uh, kickoff uh, right as, uh, as uh, Houston scored shortly before the end of the game. He's going to miss the rest of the regular season. He did start four games, um, but we took him out in place of William Gay, who um, is a defensive tackle, but we switched him to a defensive end and, uh, because of his rating being higher. And he's done a good job in, in that time. But we lost him, and this is the bad one. Look at this, guys. Charlie Weaver out for the year. He is our best linebacker putting up big numbers, um, making all these tackles, uh, four forced fumbles, one pass defended, not any interceptions, but that's not really his, his thing. And uh, yeah, he's done. A torn ankle ligament out for the season. So that is a real bummer. That means we move uh, Dave Simmons into the... Uh, top three linebackers, and I've moved things around. I moved Daryl Luce uh, to the middle linebacker position, and then Stan White, who was the middle linebacker, uh, I moved him to um, outside linebacker. So uh, I don't know if that's going to make any difference at all, but um, I feel better about Daryl Luce um, standing there in the middle calling the shots. And then um, Prentice McRae, who's been injured for two games already, uh, is going to be out another two games. So, uh, so we're suffering uh, some major defensive injuries uh, going forward. And I don't know, like, I would, you know, if you go and you take a look here at, um, just to show you guys, the free agents, where are they? Okay, right there. The free agents. I mean, there's nobody here worth picking up. If you click on peak, the best peak uh, number of any player is 69, which is 11 points below the league average. So there's nobody here on the waiver wire to pick up um, that's worth anything. So we can't even do that. Um, very frustrating. Uh, you know, I could make a trade, but I, I don't. I mean, bet this is 1980. People don't didn't trade back then. So very very frustrating. Um, let's take a moment here and pull up the. Um, the contest information is going to take a moment, um, as you can see at my background screen here. While it's loading, and maybe it is. Okay, here it is. So it's already loaded. So congrats to uh, John and Sean, both choosing Houston, uh, taking the point that Detroit was given, giving them, and, uh, and the over, which I can't imagine us not ever going over. Uh, Don t had faith in me, uh, totally misplaced faith. Uh, we, l we took the loss, um, and he had the over. So he goes to four and four. Sean up a game now, and uh, John right in it, to be honest. So um, we're going to take a look here at the Giants. As you can see, we're going to lock it in at one and a half points. 
and the over under at 38 and a half. And I think after you see the Giants roster, which we're going to look at right now, you'll know that going over is certainly the right thing to do. Uh, even when you consider our, uh, our defensive injuries, and maybe we're going to give up some points. So here's the New York Giants. Boom, there we go. Uh, they are 4-4 four and four on the year, coming off back-to-back uh, -back victories versus the Redskins and at the Cowboys. Here is their offense. Phil Simms is the quarterback for this team. We'll take a look at Phil Simms. Uh, this is his rookie card. This is the only card of value in the 1980 top set. Uh, you may have seen that uh, we opened a few packs of 1980 uh, tops, some, some wax packs a while back and did not have any luck finding the Phil Simms card. Uh, although we did get the Otis Anderson for the St. Louis Cardinals uh, rookie card. It's only worth like five bucks. Not a big deal. Um, okay, so um, he's having a pretty solid year. Second year in football. Um, eight touchdowns, nine interceptions. Not much of a scrambler, so we don't have to worry about that. And he's not even averaging 50% completion. So he's not really a uh, accurate quarterback. And if you take a look here at their offense in general, they are suffering injuries as well. Their number one running back is out. That's Billy Taylor. You see here, um, he started six games and he had 450 yards and 11 receptions out of the backfield. And he is going to be out due to a sprained ankle. So Scott Laidlaw is going to be their uh, running back uh, to start against the Lions. You see him here in the old uh, 1978 uh, Tops football. And that may have been his last card. I I'm not sure. But um, he is their uh, starting running back, and he's averaging 3.4 yards per carry. So not great. That is a, that's to our advantage. Their fullback, Larry Heater, is injured. He started seven games. He is out. And their backup is some guy named Britton Zabari who is a rookie out of Illinois, and he is rated a 59 overall. So he's got no skills. So they have nobody in the backfield. Um, and then the other injury they have is to a tackle, uh, Joe Dickerson. So he's out, and that means Terry Falcon um, will get the start. Is that all the injuries? Yeah. So that's all the injuries on their offense. So they're they're hurting in the backfield. They do have a couple good receivers. Ernest Gray, take a look there uh, at his 1980 tops card. He's got uh, 41 receptions, 645 yards. Johnny Perkins, also pretty solid receiver, 24 receptions, 470 yards, and a TD. And then their tight end is Gary Shirk, longtime Giant. 21 receptions with a touchdown. Um, and their backups are not great. They have Scott Bruner, who has played, actually, this year. I didn't notice that. Um, yeah, he's 9 for 23. So not an upgrade. Uh, he is a rookie in 1980. And is there anybody else here that is worth looking at offensively? I mean, clearly they do not have depth Um Danny Pittman is their wide receiver three, and he's not great. So, uh, yeah, so they're all, the point of it all is, is that their offense is not good. I don't know how they're going to put up points, but you know the game will find a way for them to score and keep it close. So, I mean, Detroit giving up one and a half, I have to feel like we're going to win this game just looking at the offense. But let's take a look at the defense and see if they have any injuries here. Yeah, they do. Their best linebacker, Brad Van Pelt, uh, will be injured for the next seven weeks. So he is out, and this guy named Frank Marion will step in. Does he have a card? No, he does not have a card. Out of Florida A&M. Defensive line, pretty solid. George Martin has uh, two and a half sacks. There's George Martin, George R.R. R. Martin. 
Um, and Gary Jeter, defensive end, he's got one and a half sacks. Linebackers, as I mentioned, uh, with Brad Van Pelt out. Uh, actually, you know what? Pretty solid. Frank Marion, for a guy that's only got three starts, has 49 tackles. Are they, okay, no. I thought maybe they had a 3-4 defense, or maybe they had... Is a 4-3 defense, does that mean four linebackers? That's four defensive linemen and three linebackers. That's 4-3. So how is he getting so many tackles? I don't know. I don't get it. Um, and then they have, wow, two secondary players who have three interceptions. Doug Nettles, there he is, coming over from the Colts. And they have Beasley Reese. Beasley Reese, he, is a, uh, he was a very good safety. Um, so... Having said that, they have Harry Carson, Hall of Famer. Why is this guy not in the starting lineup? He's only started one game. He is an all-pro. This guy should be in there. Um, for whatever reason, his uh, ratings are not good. He's a Hall of Famer. Who else do they have here? Uh, I guess that's about... That's, a, that's all the names I rec recognize. Like Mark Haynes... No, okay. I'm thinking of the guy for the Patriots back then. Okay, so that's that's going to do it for the defense. Um, I mean, this is a their offensive line. Or, I'm sorry, their defensive line is about the same as ours. Their linebackers are broke down, and they don't. I mean, their second safety there, Donnie Harris, is below standard. So I don't know. I feel like we have an advantage there. But this is where things get interesting. Special teams, special guys for special teams. Look at this. Their punter is going to be out. Dave Jennings, all-pro punter, injured, strained chest, which means he can't kick with a strained chest. So they must have signed this schmo. I've never, this has got to be a made-up name. Steve O'Smotherly? Come on. That's got to be, that's got to be a made-up name. So he's going to be, uh, he's just signed, you know, to the team, um, and he is rated a 56. So that is like bare bottom minimum. And then Joe Danello is their kicker, and he, he was pretty solid in real life. Um, he is 17 for 17, and points after attempt and 60% field goal. So. Um, yeah, so they won't be able to punt as well, I, I wouldn't think. So, I mean, if I were going to choose the winner of this game, I, I'd have to say we've got to win this game. We have to be the better team. That's why we're giving up one and a half points. So unless this game, uh, you know, the AI decides to keep it close, I feel like we're going to go over, and I feel like we're actually going to win. Um. I don't know. I, you know, I'll have to let you guys uh, decide um, in the contest whether or not you agree with that. But I feel like we have a really good chance. We're three and five. If you look at the playoffs, you'll see here that the Oilers beating us uh, moved into um, the uh, play-in game here, the wild card game. Steelers and Eagles are still hold uh, the bye, the first round bye. So uh, that is. That is a synopsis there of the playoffs. We're halfway through the season now, and all the games get that much more important. Uh, I, I guess I feel somewhat satisfied uh, that we are 3-5. and five. We're doing better than I ever would have imagined. I just, I, I don't know if it's the, my lack of football game calling knowledge or if it's just the skill set of our players not being as high quality as our opponents in most cases. But I feel like we're doing pretty well. So, um, you know, could we get a, uh, you know, can we finish eight and eight and feel good about ourselves? I think we could go five and three potentially here. I mean, we're favored in every game except for um, Chicago and Pittsburgh, who's uh, leading the, NFC, uh, the AFC, and Atlanta. 
So the last two games, we are not favorites. So I feel like we're going to win. Um, if you're curious, we're going to take one quick look here at league leaders, and then we'll wrap this up. Uh, quarterback rating, this is uh, in the NFC. Gary Danielson just sneaking in at 78.2. Billy Sims third in rushing with 777. Wilbert Montgomery looks like he'll go over 1,000 in the next game. Freddie Jack, uh, Freddie Scott is uh, 1,061 total receiving yards. Mel Gray right behind him. And uh, in sacks in the NFC, it's Dwayne Board of San Francisco. That's what he looks like. He's got four and a half, and Bubba, Al Bubba Baker's got, still sitting on four. He hasn't had one in three or four starts. So, Okay, um, that will do it for today. We're going to... Come back on Sunday and uh, play this game with the Giants. Please get in your uh, contest predictions here uh, by uh, game time on Sunday. And uh, here is the video if you want to take a look at me opening the 1980 uh, Topps uh, base, uh, football cards uh, and trying to find ourselves that uh, Phil Sims card. So until next week, everyone, have a great day.